we need some guidance from the president about what kind of proposal that would make a difference he would actually sign into law. I think, given the multiple horrendous shootings in August, we owe it to the American people to act. And to act means pass the Senate, pass the House, and be signed into law by the President. Welcome back. Well, that was Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell saying he needs guidance from President Trump and the White House on what they're thinking in terms of gun control policy, because McConnell needs to advance something in the Senate, but it has to be constitutional and it has to be something constituents will accept. Now, McConnell did say Congress owes it to the American people to act in some way because of horrific, those horrific, I should say, mass shootings that happened back in August. I disagree with the majority leader. I think we can both say there are horrific mass shootings, they are tragic, and we mourn for the victims and their families, but we don't need to simply do something. We already have gun laws in place. There are laws against murder. There are laws against illegally using your firearm. Those were broken. More gun laws will not stop mass shootings. So I'm disappointed in the majority leader, who's been a very reliable conservative on this issue, pretty much for as long as he's been in, in Congress and as long as he's been in the Senate and a leader. So we brought this to you a little earlier in the show, and that's that President Trump and members of his team are circulating a memo and meeting with people on Capitol Hill. Now, members, of course, congressional members on Capitol Hill. Attorney General Bill Barr is running point on this. Now, the president says everything is going well in these negotiations. Listen. I am. If it's not going to hurt a, a good, solid, great American citizen from keeping his weapon because they want that and they are entitled to that. We have a Second Amendment. I don't want to have crazy people have guns. I don't want to have bad people have guns. But we're going to do nothing to hurt the Second Amendment. And what we want to do is see if we can come up with a compromise. And that's what we're working on. And that was President Trump talking to Fox News' Ed Henry down at the border about this. Now, I like where the president is on this. Because, look, even the staunchest Second Amendment advocates like myself, we're going to agree with the president, right? We don't want somebody who's mentally unfit. We don't want somebody who's a criminal. We don't want somebody who's going to use a gun for various purposes, homicidal purposes, to have a gun, right? We don't want them in possession of a weapon if they're going to use it to hurt themselves or someone else. But there's a very arbitrary, arbitrary line very arbitrary bar when it comes to that first category. Those who are mentally unfit to own and possess firearms. One of the biggest concerns, one of the biggest concerns, and I think most valid concerns, are false allegations against innocent people should red flag laws pass. And that's why I want to welcome in our next guest by phone, Dr. John Lott, president of the Crime Prevention Research Center. John, always good to talk to you. Thanks for joining by phone. You Thank were up you. on you were up on Capitol Hill yesterday. What are you hearing? What do you think ultimately is going to shake out here? Because the White House is being adamant about not infringing further on the Second Amendment. Right. Well, obviously there's a huge desire to go and do something. I think the thing that's frustrating to me, at least, is what the Democrats want to do. Really has nothing to do with stopping these mass public shootings that they focus on. There's, for example. The big thing that they want to go and push are these background checks on the private transfers of guns, and yet there's not one mass public shooting this century that would have been stopped as a result of having uh, such a law be in effect. Uh, the White House, you know, is basically saying, look, you know, we may not believe that these are going to make much difference, but people want to have something done. Let's at least try to do this in a way that's not going to create perverse effects that are here. They aren't going to cause more problems than they're, than they're going to solve. John, let me ask you this. The memo that's been circulated, the language was very specific. It said background checks on all commercial or advertised firearm sales. So while you were right. up on the Hill, did you get a definition on commercial and advertised? Well, it basically means... What I think it says, and that is any time you put on an ad for, uh, to sell a gun, then you have to go through uh, a background check. Right. And uh, what they're trying to do is, uh, is 
they're trying, they're thinking about some novel ways of solving some of the problems that are. But but, but that but with. that wouldn't affect the hunting buddies, one who sells another a rifle. This would That's only right. matter if, if I were on a gun forum and I advertised a handgun for sale. Exactly. Okay. Okay. And and uh, so just so people understand, there's some big problems that exist with the universal background check that the Democrats put forward. Everybody wants to stop criminals from getting the gun. The thing is, one, the universal background check can be pretty costly in Washington, D.C., where they're going to be voting on it, costs $125. Right. So let's say you really believe that background checks reduce violent crime. You want to encourage people to go and do the background check. If you want to encourage them, why make them pay essentially a $125 tax to go and do what you want them to do? And so what the uh, Trump people are talking about is an app that uh, would allow the people involved in transaction without having to go to an FFL, which could be difficult, you know, for somebody who so is John, let me ex- John, let me stop you there and explain it to the viewers. So an FFL is a federal firearms license holder, a gun right. shop, someone who's legally able to transfer a firearm, and they'll typically call in the background check. Now, I saw other language about... Somebody wouldn't have to go the the whole distance and get that FFL, but they were talking about background check agents, people who are certified to just conduct the background check. This is the first I've heard of the app. Right. Well, the app, as I understand it, would be uh, something you'd have on your phone. You'd have to go, though, to a notary republic. Okay. And only the person who was buying the gun would put in the information that's there. And the reason why you do that is to protect privacy. You just don't want to be able to have, you know, me go and look up John Cardillo uh, right. and see what your criminal background might be uh, for obvious privacy concerns. And you'd have to pay the notary public like $10, $15 to go and do it. But that's a lot less than the charges that you see for... Well, New York, New York City, it. right, New York City, D.C. So is there talk of the federal government, maybe the ATF, setting a universal fee on this so that municipalities like D.C. can't come in with these draconian costs? Well, they would kind of get around the, the states and local governments that have these types by going of through the By going through the app. So the app would be federal. The app wouldn't then the app wouldn't first hit the local or state database like right. is the case now. It would be federal to the NCIC. And then right. that would kick the results back to the uh, to the notary public or the agent who would then be right. able to approve the sale. Okay. And, and as long as the person qualifies, then you're off any legal liability if anything were to happen. It's just that if you, if you advertise a gun and then you don't put it through the app uh, to check uh, <laughs> and something happened, then you would be legally liable. But the neat thing about this is, one of the reasons why I think gun control advocates have been pushing for universal background checks is they want to create a national registry of guns. I agree. And let's say five years from now, if we had universal background checks, where all transfers and all purchases had to go through a licensed dealer, they have to keep that information. And five years from now, you could have a new president of Congress that could pass a law that says, you know, all that information you've been collecting? You have to send that to the federal government, and you have kind of an instant national registration list of all law-abiding gun owners. This, right now, under federal law, the federal government, which would be the only ones that would see this background check information done on these apps, has to destroy that information after 24 hours. And so you would prevent it from, from creating a national registry. Yeah, I, I mean, I like the app idea because I think they're going to do something. That, to me, seems the most harmless of all. Dr. John Lott, Crime Prevention Research Center. Always great to get your insights, John. Thanks. Thank you.